Welcome to another video in the Rick Rice One channel. Glad to have you aboard. I uh, want to talk about a, um, an important technical area uh, within Photoshop and actually uh, printing. This is where we're primarily focusing on print images, whether you take it to a print shop to have a brochure or a flyer uh, uh, printed, or you are preparing a newspaper ad for uh, a client or you or um, even at home or in an office if you have um, a postscript printer and all laser black and white or color laser printers are postscript printers uh, they have something called uh, the LPI or a halftone screen basic concept here um, when we look at images, whether it's in print or we look at images like right now on Photoshop, we, uh, when we see photographs, what we expect to see is something uh, that has traditionally been called continuous tone. All photographs, all paintings, drawings um, that are realistic are continuous tone and what that really means is the dark and the light tones blend together and give us this illusion of um, uh, uh, depth and uh, dimension and the way our eyes see the world around us and um, it's very important to understand that although our technologies are getting much better we still do not really have the ability to reproduce continuous tone images at least not yet and so when we uh, zoom in on images on our computer Photoshop type images um, we always uh, and when we talk about Photoshop images uh, remember I'm always talking about as well uh, images that are scanned images that are taken with our digital cameras um, when we uh, zoom in on what appears to be a continuous tone image like right now you see that this is really just a bunch of little squares uh, pixels and each one has the illusion of a slightly different shade of gray and uh, when uh, these are reduced in size uh, and they're very small um, it basically fools our eye they all blend together and um, to our eye it's a little bit of smoke and mirrors it um, uh, recreates if you will the illusion of continuous tone now in printing in printing and long before we had computers in printing there was an equivalent a different but equivalent um, thing going on and uh, that has always been uh, referred to as a halftone screen, a halftone screen. And um, a halftone screen is how in printing we get this illusion of uh, tonality. And again, in printing, long before the computers, it was also an illusion of smoke and mirrors. Uh, this little image, as you can see, it appears to be uh, a photograph. Um, but again, when we start to zoom in on this image, what we really see are um, uh, circles or um, large um, dots and um, these are called halftone cells and big ones close together give us the illusion of a dark area and smaller ones further apart give us the illusion of a light area and then um, like the pixels on our um, computer images um, uh, the halftone cells because they're generally pretty small and we can't see them very well with our eyes our eyes blend it all together and um, it looks like a continuous tone image in print well what is all this technical goobly gop um, uh, got to do with anything well it is the fundamentals of understanding printed images and um, one of the big gurus of uh, Photoshop uh, in some video I saw a few years ago said the image size dialog box 
the image size dialog box is probably the most important dialog box in Photoshop and um, this is where we talk about and look at and can um, um, mess with the physical size of an image and the um, resolution of an image and what's important here is uh, and I'm going to keep it kind of simple but um, when printing devices um, go to uh, make the halftone cells that allow images in print to look uh, good and, and look uh, natural um, there has to be um, enough pixels per inch information the little square pixels per inch uh, so that the printing device can in fact um, uh, convert it all rasterize it and convert it all to halftone cells that will in print give us the illusion uh, that the image looks good and is crisp and clean and uh, so the bottom line here is the basic concept and many graphic designers art directors printing people amazingly have never really learned uh, some of this stuff and honestly um, uh, really um, aren't able to articulate it very well uh, most uh, uh, good working graphic designers understand that the right amount of pixels per inch which is this right here um, is uh, what you need is one and a half to two times the halftone screen in today's vernacular it's called the LPI the LPI those are those halftone cells the old term was halftone cells the new term is lines per inch lines per inch and uh, you need one and a half to two times the LPI the lines per inch of pixels resolution if your image is going to look good in print and that's the simple bottom line uh, but it's fundamentally important and uh, another aspect that gets um, uh, messed with um, in Photoshop and again in digital images is when we change the size of our Photoshop images in Photoshop or if we let's say place it in InDesign or even Illustrator and then uh, drag the corner and make it bigger or smaller we're changing the size of it that changes the resolution because the pixels per inch is set and when you make the image bigger you're spreading out that bunch of pixels and uh, so there's less of them in um, a sample square inch area when you make images smaller you're pulling uh, the pixels uh, closer together and so there would be more of them in a sample inch and so um, understanding the basic formula of how to get the right resolution and then understanding this um, um, added concept that messing with the size of images also messes with the resolution the pixels per inch of the image so in the end we need one and a half to two times the LPI or the halftone screen LPI and halftone screen being the same and um, you can ask your print shop you can look in documentation on your uh, your laser printer um, uh, if you're preparing ads for the newspaper you simply ask the folks at the newspaper or look at their technical specs generally they use an 85 LPI an 85 line screen and so one and a half um, of 85 would be um, uh, one uh, 27 and uh, 2 times 85 would be 170 and so the resolution of your image needs to be between 127 127 and um, 170 uh, if it's going to look good in print if let's say I was doing a uh, something on a um, an in-house newsletter on a laser printer or I was preparing an ad for a newspaper most newspapers anyways so um, and um, if you want to increase the size of an image 
or you want to increase the resolution of any image. What you need to do is come here again to the image size dialog box and um, the deal is again another basic concept uh, that you need to understand and I realize we're get, getting into a lot of technical stuff here but this is this is the reality of stuff. Um, what you need to um, uh, remember is that uh, concept that we probably all basically know you can't get something for free you can't get something for nothing and so if I in the case of Photoshop images digital images if I want to increase the the resolution of an image I have to pay for it if I want to increase the size of an image I have to pay for it and so um, the way we pay for it is with giving up something in that other category. The two categories are the pixels per inch, again go image, image size, and um, we see that we have um, the physical size, that's one category, and then we have the number of pixels per inch. Pixels per inch, often folks not knowing will refer to this as dots per inch has nothing to do with dots per inch. As we've seen, these are little square pixels. And um, if you want to increase the resolution, you have to give up some size. If you want to increase this size, you have to pay for it with some resolution. And the way you do that is this. Um, if you look closely, you see that by default, this little device here, this little uh, bracket, locks the height and width together, the size together, so you can't easily distort the image. Well, look what we can do. Come down here and resample image. Resample image. You uncheck this and then the locking device, as you'll see, will encompass the resolution and the size together. So I'll uncheck this the size and the resolution are now locked together and Photoshop will keep you honest and so what I mean by that is if I want to increase the resolution now that it's all locked together Photoshop will um, automatically make us pay watch the size the size is going to cut in half I'm going to double the resolution 144 and you see the size just um, uh, got reduced uh, in half. And um, if I wanted to um, increase the size, I'm going to have to pay for it by giving up some resolution. And um, so let's just say I'll put in a, a number of 10, and you see the resolution is now at 60. So, um, you have to have, and if let's say I was doing a newspaper ad, this resolution is not high enough um, to um, have this image come out looking good in uh, a print ad. It would need to be, as I said a minute ago, one and a half to two times standard newspaper halftone screen, uh, which would be 127, one and a half of the LPI of 85. Um, uh, and the maximum would be 2 times 85 or 170 and you can see this is not even close to 127 and if I want to I lock it all together by unchecking resample and I can raise this to 127 and uh, that will barely get it uh, to print and look good but notice the size is pretty small um, I can't have my cake and eat it too of increasing resolution um, and making the image bigger. Um, I have to pay for the size with resolution or I have to pay for resolution with size. And as long as you come here and uh, uncheck this, Photoshop will do this size resolution business for you 
and then all you need to do is ask your print shop or your newspaper what LPI they use, what halftone screen do they use, and uh, multiply that by one and a half to two times. More than two times will not make it better, it just makes the files bigger. But what is really dangerous is if it's too low. And uh, once you know uh, that, you can do the simple little formula, then come in here to image size, lock it all together, and you can in fact change the resolution to where it needs to be, but understand that whatever size it then says the image is, that is the size of the image. You can always make it smaller, but you can't increase the size um, or the resolution without paying for it in the other category. So, very uh, technical, I realize, but it's the fundamentals of print, and if you can get your head around this, then um, you are in good shape, because as I said, many, many professionals, well-meaning, don't understand this, and um, they'll just give you some general idea of what the resolution should be, but this is all professionals all around the world who know what they're doing. Um, this is what it's about. One and a half to two times the halftone screen and realize that even once it's set, if you mess with the size, that's going to either increase uh, the resolution if you make it smaller or decrease the resolution if you make it bigger. But uncheck resample and then you can play with the size and the res and um, this will keep you honest and it will happen even if you don't uncheck this and you think you're going to ignore this um, trust me it it uh, won't happen and, uh, and then when it's in print and it looks terrible then it's too late to do anything about it remember here in um, our computers um, our computers are low resolution devices and so we won't see imperfections uh, many times here on the screen um, but in print when you're on deadline it's too late it's not much you can do all right well thanks a lot for tuning in and I'm gonna uh, uh, keep on working on some new ones for Illustrator and Photoshop so um, I hope you'll uh, stay tuned and I also intend to uh, start a new group of some PowerPoints uh, that I have for lectures one of them being on this very subject and um, uh, some other design considerations. I'll uh, get those loaded into a playlist before long, so keep an eye out for those uh, uh, PowerPoints um, uh, with audio, as well as the continuation and expansion of the video library from the Rick Rice One channel. Thanks. Have a great day.